Breaking can be very trendy, mm. you know what I'm saying? And the new trends come in, and whoever's hot with that new trend, once that trend is over, mm. so they, they, if they don't evolve, they dissolve. You know what I'm saying? So I've seen it a lot of niche, come and go. like one yeah. hit wonders almost like mm -hmm. a niche. And the, the, the problem with that is they probably weren't well-rounded, mm. you know? And being well-rounded and number one for me is creative. That is what's going to give you longevity. Killer, killer, boop, 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 podcast. Killer, killer, official, .com. <laughs> you need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer podcast. One, two, one, two, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct. Central as you need to be, I can tell you where it's in a disclosed location right now, in the heart of downtown LA. Big shout out to all the originals, people that are sharing and caring and all that, doing that good stuff for us. Uh, it's doing it for our health, we're doing it for the culture, we're doing it for the street, sport and art. And if you haven't got the Kellervision app, you know what it do. Head over to Apple Android, free download, Kellervision for the sporting art with mini docs, live streams, DJ mix, and of course, notorious podcast that we're delivering to you in uh, beautiful 4K. Check this out. We have a legend inside the place, one of the B-Boy Originals, West Coast pioneering, Style Elements crew. I cannot stop gushing. The man is in the building. B-Boy Crumbs, what are we saying? Oh, my brother. <laughs> yeah, man, we're here. We're here. How are you? Doing good, man. Yeah. Can't complain. Tell them what you're here for. What's, what's, what's uh, going we, on? We're doing the Undisputed event here in LA and um, I'm one of the judges and uh, you know just good old crew battles solo battles those good old mixing crew it battles up, you know <laughs> can't can't forget those you know yeah yeah you know the one-on-ones have been taken off the last 20 years but mm. can't forget about the crews you know yeah yeah and and the intention of b-boying has moved it's it's evolved it's You've seen it from a very early stage of, of what seems to be like the, jer the, the leap journey towards 2024. And these events are popping up a lot more. Nothing like Undisputed, of course, but mm. they're moving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I started in like 93. So seeing where it was to we had maybe in the West Coast, like two, three major events per year. You know, but then you had your small jams too, mm. you know, all that. And, um, and we rocked a bunch of raves back in the days and, you know, all kinds of different jams that mm. are pretty much non-existent now. Mm. So it's like we lost some things, but then we gained more breaking events mm. as well. You know, so to see so many high level events every month yeah. and all around the world, like nonstop every weekend. Mm there's a few events, yeah. you know, so there's just so much more opportunity for these uh, young, younger generations to go out there and mix it up. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you feel like it's, uh, I mean, talk about paying dues. We'll get into you and Style Elements in due course, but, you know, to think of how far it's come and getting your richly deserved non-promise. There was never a promise in that this was ever going to happen, but you're heralded now as, as a pioneer of our generation. Mm. Um, it must feel really gratifying to know that you can go to these places and judge. You can be on the floor doing showcases and just a lot yes, of, sir. it's just a different level of gratitude that's firing your way, you know? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You know, uh, a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, from my generation, a lot of them aren't around anymore. Mm. You know, there's only, you know, a handful that kind of stood the test of time, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, everybody goes through different situations. Life, yeah. you know, hands you different cards. And, um, you know, there's some of us that just never stopped. Yeah, you know, never I'm stopped. one of those guys that just like, and still till this day, I'm still competing when I want to, mm. you know, judge, um, cipher, mm. showcase, theater, yeah. industry work. Like I, I do it all. I've been doing it all my whole career. And, and, and I just have a deep passion for this and that's why it keeps me going through all these different generations yeah. it's very interesting navigating through the different generations and seeing um the differences how so explain that how how is it how is it interesting from a from a like you see you seen from behind you you're seeing it in front of oh, you oh yeah give me some give me some uh, intel on what what you're recognizing within this journey 
Well, every generation, generations go pretty quick in breaking. I would say there's a new generation like every four years, you know, and you'll have like some breakers that'll make a name for themselves and yeah. they're really hot in that generation. And then a lot of them, they just, they're gone Yeah, yeah. after that generation. You know, it's hard to stick around and reinvent yourself, yeah. you know, like, like, say music musicians you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying like a prince or yeah you know michael jackson or madonna like they were able to keep reinventing themselves to stick around and have these super long careers it's yeah. the same in breaking and that's hard to do because breaking can be very trendy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and the new trends come in and whoever's hot with that new trend once that trend is over mm -hmm. so they it. they if they don't evolve they dissolve you know what I'm saying? So I've seen it a lot of niche, come and go. like one yeah. hit wonders almost like mm -hmm. a niche. And that the the problem with that is they probably weren't well rounded, mm -hmm. you know. And being well rounded and number one for me is creative. That is what's going to give you longevity. So you'll yeah. survive through any era. Oh my God! Yeah. Let's get into some style elements real quick. We will Let's definitely go. come back to this, but bro, like, <clears throat> it starts for me. A young man, maybe 95, 96, walking into my favorite record store, Mr. Bongo's in Soho, and seeing your Style Elements video mm. up, on the, up on the shelf, and I'm like, yo, I want that. The moment I saw that guy... The VHS. It was, yeah. Yeah, man. Bro, like, you guys, <clears throat> you inspired so many people just by the dexterity. It was, it was like street dance, and then you flipped it and morphed it, and you could see that the, the DNA of what you, where you guys had come from mm. and the mix you know martial arts of it it was like like the t the squadron came down it was just unbelievable levels of uh, uh showmanship from every single one of oh, you thank you man yeah we um <clears throat> when we stepped on the scene um it was at a time where pre-internet mm. pre-youtube and like i said the vhs tapes right mm. that's all we had but nobody was putting them out maybe rock steady mm. and then we were like the second ones yeah you know so and you know fast forward to the dvd era and mm. then the internet now it's like crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. you see everything totally. instantaneously with live streams and stuff yeah but back then we didn't have any of that so it forced us to be original mm. we didn't even know really the foundation you know what I'm saying? Because we, we could saw Beat Street and, you know, Breaking 1 and 2 and then some videos from yeah, yeah. Europe that we were blessed to get through um, through people like Thomas. and um, Yeah, big up Thomas. But we didn't have a lot to go off. And even the videos that we did have, we would get inspired by them but not take their moves or styles. Mm. We would get inspired by it and flip it yeah. and make it ours, you know? So much to the point that you would never know unless we told you who we got inspired by, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just a different time. And like I said, it forced us to be creative and original. And, um, and we, as a crew, <clears throat> our guidelines back then, which are different now, well, it was always the same for my crew, but it was not to look like anybody else in your crew. Mm -hmm. If you remember pre, like in the 80s, like crews kind of like broke the same, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you'd have crew battles and they all kind of do the same That's things, right. the windmills, whatever footwork patterns yeah. and freezes. And it was... Uh, it's almost like standard DNA <clears throat> kind of, right. you know, you've got to get this right to do this or if you're not a right. real... Blah, blah, blah. So we totally went backwards, hmm. you know what I mean? We went against the grain and um, like I'll take a quote from Alien Ness. He said, we made it legal to be illegal. <laughs> right in the scene yeah. so we just started from the creative side mm -hmm. of things and along our journey we picked up the foundation later and then flipped that on its head and started mixing in like crazy details with all different dance styles mm -hmm. but in a breaking format yeah with the breaking style and flavor you know and that's style elements and that's why i think like when we came out and started traveling around the world and competing, mm. like, people were just like, what the fuck is this? What you know? the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, I remember talking to Tony the Pencil second to none, and he was just like, yo, like, it was, he, he described it as it's so, such a pleasure dancing with you guys and knowing you guys and going out for drinks with you guys and yeah. getting fucked up with you guys. Second to none, man. Yeah, Those man. Are my boys. Oh, geez. Uh, it was just, you brought that punk, fresh vibrancy that 
also came with a lot of the West Coast. When I think about Invisible Scratch Pickles for its time. Oh, yeah. They were a big inspiration for us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what they did on the tables, we were doing on the floor. Yeah. You know, manipulating sounds and Mm. and movements. Yeah. You know, they were doing that with sound. We were doing that with with movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Changed the whole game. And I think as a package, it re-exported, it imported through a new idea of anything goes, you know, get get your craft right, but anything goes. It's like the next level up from what had been there before. Mm -hmm. Um, And West Coast definitely held the crown to that. Yeah, and we caught a lot of flack for doing it the way we did it in the beginning Mm -hmm. because people didn't understand. And when you see something new, sometimes it's hard to be accepting of it, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It takes a little while for it to develop and to kick in. Mm -hmm. But when it kicked in, boy, it changed changed the game. Changed the game, bro. Like, you guys became, and still, to my mind, I don't know many other crews that took it to that level. I mean, give me some other people that, you know, you were battling like crazy out there. You know what I mean? For its time, you guys were ahead of the field. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there were a lot of good crews, you know. Like, our rivals in, in the West Coast was Renegades and Rock Force crew. Of course, Rock Force. You oh. know. Yeah, big up Renegades, um, yeah. And um, and then later came like your um, ground zeros mm-hmm. and skill methods. Mm-hmm. They're like an era after us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, but I feel like we helped them develop yeah. the way they did too. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like with the creative side of things and yeah. everything. And um, so yeah, there was there was a lot of good crews, but <clears throat> in the beginning stages of style elements. It was really just like on the West Coast, mainly power moves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like was, Renegades yeah. were a great crew, but they were 90% power. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that's why, like, when we battled them in 96 at Radiotron, mm-hmm. you could Big see. Big on Radiotron as well. Oh, that yeah. Was, was, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. You could see, like, the difference mm. in what was, what was happening. But in the power game, like, they, they had that on lock. Dominant, yeah. Yeah. But we were just a little more well rounded with some new styles, mm. new flavors and stuff. And after that, things started to change. Mm. Then crews started to pick up and, and, and morph into more, more of the stuff we were doing too. Did, did you feel it to the point where it was like, you, you felt like, respectfully, you were competing with an influence that you had provided particular crews, where it's almost like you could kind of read between the lines and, and you were like, oh, I, kind of, I kind of did that, but I can see you doing it back at me. Did you ever get that feeling? Oh, we, yeah, people will battle us, battle us with our own moves, our own stuff, <laughs> our own creative, you know, moves. And um, that's, again, when things started to change from, like, it used to be, like, biting was not allowed, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It was looked down upon to where, like, if you're not biting, you're not good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, right? That's kind of, even now, yeah, that's yeah. what it is, because there's so much information out there. And um, the stuff that we were doing back then a lot of it has become, I call, future foundation, you know? And uh, it's a beautiful thing, but in the beginning stages, it was like when we would first see it, we're like, oh my God, what the hell? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they're taking our, our shit and yeah, doing yeah. that. But now, and even like a long time ago, we accepted it. And, and it's a beautiful to. thing to see like the world, you know, representing that style. Yeah, you kind of have to in a way, don't you? Because as much as it's, what well, it starts off as like severe burning and you're just like, damn, I, I, I kind of have to be flattered, but I'm not because you know, it's going into the circle, it's going into the octagon. Um, but then after a while, you see the development take shape and you realize that you're a piece of the puzzle. You're a piece of the organism that mm-hmm. keeps on moving, right? Um, where did it all begin for you? Where, where did dance begin <clears throat> for Crumbs? In Modesto, California, 209, Central Valley. Um, that's, where, that's where it all, it all came, came about, man. Like, you're, you got your cast like Ivan, Remind, mm-hmm. myself, Quality, Super Dave. Oh, And geez. we were all from either Modesto or Stockton, and Stockton was 20 minutes away from Modesto, or Sacramento, which was 45 minutes away from, from both. So we were all like in, in that close range of Northern Cali. And um, we would just, you know, connect and train all the time in our garages and just hit all the local jams. And, and but at our local jams, there were so many different dancers, like great house dancers, great all styles dancers <laughs> back then, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, we, we meshed a lot of that in with our style, too. And um, so 
for me, it started around 93, you know, like around there. Uh, I would say I was like in eighth grade, mm-hmm. you know, seeing some ki- some kids breaking at my school too, but they were really like breaking in their socks and <clears throat> doing like, you know, handstand freezes and, and alpha kicks mm. and um, maybe some flares and windmills. That's crazy. Yeah. Eighth grade and you, you guys were rolling like that at school? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big Did time, you- yeah. We would practice every lunch out in the halls like every day. Yeah, like crazy. Without even much consideration of where it was going. It was just fun. Yeah, just fun. Just enjoying the process and building and growing. Yeah. yeah, most definitely. That's what I look forward to going to school for. Really? More Hell than yeah. anything? Yeah. God, talk about... Were you embraced by the teachers? Oh, yeah. They loved it. Of course, yeah. Yeah. They knew that that was a vocation. They saw, then. yeah. Because yeah. you know, it's an outlet, you know? Yeah. We could be doing a lot worse shit yeah. than breaking. <laughs> yeah, but what you inherently done was take what was initially there as an idea and you then moved it forward. And the 10,000 hours that you collected in that time where you were just having fun, when you came to like becoming part of a bigger crew in a collective, in a, in a rave space or a club space, you had already done all the groundwork. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, we were prepared for anything, any cipher, any comp. You know, we, we built ourselves up to, to last and, yeah. and to take over. I think that's what blew people's minds the most is that how come some young guys like yourselves at the time could be so versatile? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's a lot for people to fathom because a lot of people from back in the day often ha- got these, you know, wild style, style wars and were just copying um, yep. and catching up with themselves. But you guys just kind of <laughs> blew the doors open, just sw- rolled on in, you know, just donning it. It's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I know, like, for me, because I started so young, I was, um, I was blessed to hang around with people that were already, like, in their 20s mm. or, or 19, mm. and um, they would take me to the clubs and get me in because they're great dancers themselves, mm. and, you know, they, were, they had to pull to get me in. So I was, I was hitting ciphers in, in nightclubs since I was, like, 13, 14, and so that gave me a lot of... Um, uh, uh, practice mm. you know mm-hmm. practice in those those raw elements and a lot of experience mm. you know so going from there with all the adults that are already really good yeah. and hanging with them yeah it, it it gave me the experience to to all the battles yeah and whoever we went against you know maybe they didn't hit all the clubs like we hit mm. and it, it shows you, know? you can tell. Yeah. One thing Tony the Pencil said, which, which holds true, because it holds true with beatboxing, and it holds true with a lot of the more hip-hop cultural arts, is you walk into the octagon, you can tell just by the way a person moves that they just have not got, whether it's the size of the space, and they're trying to figure out how to move in it, mm. they haven't done the groundwork, they haven't had that experience. You can tell, can't yeah, you? They can't adapt yeah. to the situation, Yeah. you know? It takes a lot of versatility and, and like I said, experience. Yeah. You got to put yourself in all different situations mm. and, um, and train, train in all different situations. How many days a week do you train? Back then or now? I would say back then. We started back then. <clears throat> back then, we were animals. Uh, we would train eight to ten hours a day, six days a week. Six days a week? Yeah. Eight to ten hours a day? Yeah. Injuries? Nope. No injuries? Mm-mm. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Never I mean, I've had, I've had one surgery okay. on my shoulder, okay. but I've been breaking for 30 years yeah, nonstop. Yeah. That's pretty damn yeah, we'll good. Yeah, we'll allow that. We'll let him have that one, but not too many of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Was it rotator cuff or something? Was it something? Um, no, I, I, I tore a ligament. The, okay. I forgot the name of the ligament, but it's the ligament that connects the arm to the shoulder. Jesus. It's just completely snapped. Damn. You know, that was in 2018. But besides that... Nothing, just small injuries, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about now? So what, what, how many hours a day now? Now, I, I, obviously, I'm 43 now, so I can't be Big up that. killing myself. Big up that 43 yes, sir. crew, come on, man. Yeah, and feel oh, great. Yeah. yeah I'm you on, look great, bro. I'm on fire right now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel really good, and my body's good. You know, there's, your ligaments get <clears throat> yeah. worn down, and cartilage gets worn down, stuff gets a little bone on bone, mm-hmm. but... You, you adapt and work around it and, yeah. and do more tedious work to, yeah. be, to prevent injury. You know, yeah. I know what's, 
wrong with my body and I know how to treat it now that I'm older mm -hmm. and there's so much information out there, right? Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of more, like I said, tedious work, like TRX band work, I do yoga, I do all the stuff that I didn't do, didn't have to do when mm -hmm. I was young, mm -hmm. I put the extra work in now so mm -hmm. that I can continue doing what I love to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but now I train, I split it up. I can't, breaking is very hard on the body, Yeah. you know? so. I split up half of my training breaking, and then I do half um, all other style of training. Like, like whether that downs, be, yoga, things like yeah, that. Yeah, whether that be swimming, mm -hmm. running. I have my, uh, my workout circuit that I call Crumbs Fit, and it's a lot of different exercises that I created, and I mix it up with the hit style, mm -hmm. like 30 seconds on, 30 seconds yeah, off, yeah. and I'll do like 35 rounds, and it's killer. That but it's, it's movements that, are, that target the whole body, but don't kill you yeah. you know what i'm saying like breaking when you're throwing yourself yeah. around oh i get you so you're focusing on the things that the kind of things you would do that would be throwing you around on the floor break dancing but you're toughening those areas by doing the hit yeah by doing the hit and and um and making sure like i'll do five to six different exercises in one session mm. in rotation for 35 rounds so the workout will take me like a half hour uh -huh. and it's it's non-stop so it's killer so you get cardio stamina uh, strength and conditioning, all of mm. that in one, and it doesn't beat your body up because the movements aren't like air flares and yeah. you know crazy, crazy stuff. But like you said, it toughens up your body. So when you do break, you're nice and solid, nice and strong. Got oh, cardio, got you know, got it all. Yeah, you know. So I do half breaking and half that. So maybe during the week I'll break three to four times a week, but I only go like an hour and a half, and then right. I'll shut it down. Okay. Even if I can go longer, I just shut it down. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I guess your body can get quite excited knowing that it's done all the hit and everything, and then after a while it's like, oh, actually, I've got a break now. Mm -hmm. You may have the energy to begin with, but then after a while, you have to remind yourself that it could get a little bit nasty if you do it for too long, right? Yeah, yeah, and sometimes I do two-a-days also. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll, I'll do hit during the day and then break at night. Ah, got you. you know? On that note, though, I saw that you were doing um, some uh, classes. Mm -hmm. Give us, a, give us an explanation on that and how that, how that works and how that feeds into the theory that you, you were giving then. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been teaching for well over 20 years. Like when I travel, I'll do workshops, but it's always just one or two classes and then I go on my way to mm -hmm. the next spot, right? Yeah. But I always wanted to open my own school. It was on my bucket list. And I finally did that about a year and a half ago. It's Six Step Academy. It's in Atlanta, Georgia, where I live now. Dope. And, um, you know, I've been building there. Um, and, um, you know, teaching others is always teaching myself again mm. with all the intricate details that I may not use in practice because I think I already, I already know it, what you do, but you, you lose it if you don't use it. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? So it forces me to go through all my fundamentals all the time and keep everything sharp Back at the, the same time yeah. teaching others. That's you know? sick. So it's, it's a win-win. Yeah. Mm. And like you say, regressing back into little basic, you know, step by steps. Yeah, like you say, it like refuels your energy. Mm -hmm. And do you ever get like these moments where a student just gives you a whole new perspective? You must get that quite a bit. Yeah, they teach me, you know, I'll, I'll give them all kinds of different moves, styles, flows, techniques. And, um, and then once I feel like they got a good understanding of it, I'll say, okay, now, show me how you would do that or mm. what you would do in and out of that. Mm. And that's the beautiful part of it because then they start to put their own style into it and it totally morphs into something uh, different into to how they would do it. And then I get ideas back from that, yeah, you know? Because yeah, yeah. there's a thousand ways to flip one move. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there really is, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what keeps the evolution of breaking moving, doesn't it? it keeps it moving forward. Anyone Absolutely. you need to look out for? Anyone that you're saying, right, that's the next, here they come. Give some names. Anyone to look out for? God, there's so many now. It's just insane. There's so <laughs> right? many great breakers in the world. Like, the, what impresses me the most is the women mm. now. Like, it's crazy the level that they're on. Like, mm. honestly, I never thought I'd see it like this. You know, they're like doing crazy power moves mm. and just the musicality and style and finesse and grace and creativity. It's, it's wild. Oh, so you know? dope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great to see. As you can hear, ladies and gentlemen, we are literally downtown in amongst all the action. We're about 
what, 45 minutes to an hour away from kicking off the Undisputed, and you're very much the judge, one of the many judges in the hot seat. So. Yes, sir. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great to be here. It's always an honor when I get to um, to be a part of a judging panel mm -hmm. um, and see the younger generations just mix it up. Mm -hmm. it, it really, um, it, it inspires me every single time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a hard job. You know, it's very hard. Because, I don't envy it. <laughs> yeah, because the, the level is so high. But, mm. you know, I also think that it's important to have, you know, well-rounded judges that have been doing this for a long time mm. um, to be able to get it right most of the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's perfect. Yeah. But when you have people that have been true to this and been doing it for decades and, and mm. nonstop and competing, mm. you know what I mean? That mm. it, it means a lot. And and the competitors, they feel that too. Yeah, they so do. So whenever whatever judgment you give, it's like, okay, Calibre. I gotta 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 I gotta go back and look at it and see what they're seeing, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure having you on, man. Yes sir. Honestly. Appreciate it, man. It's been great. Crumbs inside the place. Yeah, Stoic brother. as ever. Real B-boy shit right here. Killer Keller podcast out like in was out of fashion for downtown LA. Um, we'll see you back on the other side. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither did they. Wherever you are, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Nice one, Crumbs. Stay lucky. Peace. Peace out.